Good morning. Let's all stand. Psalm 66, 1 through 4 says, Shout to God for joy, everyone on earth. Sing about the glory of his name. Give him glorious praise. Say to God what wonderful things you do. Your power is so great that your enemies bow down to you in fear. Everyone on earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praises of your name. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for this day, Lord. I thank you for the fantastic week that we've had learning about you. And I just pray, Lord, that the excitement that we had last week will continue and that we will certainly, certainly want to tell others about you. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
right. Some of you kids were here this week, and you learned a song called Awesome God. Did you learn that, Malia? Okay, if you're from VBS and you want to come sing with us, come on up and we'll sing Awesome God. Come on up. Come on. It might be a little bit different than what we sang it, but it'll be similar. Y'all can go up there. Go. Yeah, get up on stage, guys. <laughs> we'll move. <laughs> we'll just move. I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to come over here. How's that? All right, remember our God. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so very much for your love and for your greatness and for your power. I just thank you so very much for the Bible truths that we were able to learn during Vacation Bible School and that we are going to talk about even yet today. Father, we just love you and we honor you and we give you the praise. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Let's take up our Dime a Day missions offering at this time. If the children will let you go to the back and get their containers... All the monies do go to support our missions work in Honduras.
I think we have just okay. I think we've just decided that uh, kids can stay in here this morning because we are going to talk about Vacation Bible School. But the nursery is available. Nursery is available if you'd like to take the little ones to the nursery. All others can stay in here today. No. All right. So, uh, announcements. First of all, there is an offering plate in the back for your tithes and offerings. Uh, you can also give using the GiveLify app on your phones or on the internet, GiveLify.com. Uh, you can also have checks mailed to the church, or you can use your bank's online service and have the, your bank mail a check to the church. There's all kinds of ways of, of getting your tithes and offerings in to the church, and we appreciate all of the donations. Um, let me just say the Diamond Day Missions offering, it does go to Honduras, but we also raise money in Vacation Bible School for our missions work as well, and we raised over $400, $400 for missions for Honduras. And, uh, and, and the culmination of all of that was the pies in the face if you were here or you saw it on Facebook. Uh, I got a pie in the face because the girls won and then just because uh, Talina's such a good sport she got a pie in the face and uh, someone said and did you see who was giving you the ammunition? It was Derek that was giving us the ammunition so yeah kind of fun. Well as I usually do I move away from the um, sermon series that I'm in the midst of, and I kind of summarize Vacation Bible School for you, the Bible points for Vacation Bible School. Because many of you uh, were not able to be a part of the Bible lessons. If you were a crew leader, you were, but if you were in another station at Vacation Bible School, or if you didn't attend Vacation Bible School, then you may not uh, know what they were as well. The theme, celebrating God's greatness. Celebrating God's greatness. And God's greatness, greatness is monumental. That's the way that it's tied together. God's greatness is monumental. Did you notice the songs that we sang? God is great. God is, our God is greater. Our God is an awesome God. They all have to do with God's greatness. How often during the week do you stop to contemplate the greatness of our God? I've heard it said that your God is only as big as you make him. I mean, if you only think of God as being this, you know, you can put him in a box or you think that he is some... Uh, heavenly judge or this mean cop or whatever kind of a understanding you have of God, that's all the kind of God you're going to have. But our God is so much greater than that. He's so much full of love. He's so much full of grace and forgiveness. He is a great God. And we cannot put any kind of limits or parameters or put him into any kind of a paradigm that we have. He is so great. This week we studied the story of Joseph. If you are not familiar with Joseph in the Bible, I challenge you to read Genesis 37 through 50. Yes, there's several chapters there. Genesis 37 through 50. And Joseph is the one who is the main character in most of these chapters. I think there's one that kind of gets off the track, but the rest of them are about Joseph. So who was Joseph? Well, Joseph lived in a big, big, big family. In fact, he was one of 12 brothers and several sisters. He had a big family, all sons and daughters of Jacob. Jacob. Now, Jacob had four wives, and he had children from all four of these wives, and Joseph was the 11th in the line of the 12 brothers brothers. Okay? So that's who Joseph was. Now Joseph was the favorite of the father. Now 
Parents, you're not supposed to have favorites. You're just not supposed to have favorites. It runs into trouble having a favorite. And I know all the kids in here are going, well, I'm the favorite. I'm the favorite. No, parents don't have favorites. But Joseph was the favorite of Jacob. In fact, he was such a favorite that he did special things for him, like making him and giving him a special coat. I, I need a Joseph. Uh, would you, yeah, come on up, Malia. <laughs> Joseph, come stand right here, Joseph, or Josephina, as the case may be. Now, Joseph, being the favorite, got a very, very, very special gift from the father. Joseph got this coat made of all kinds of colors, and it was a beautiful coat. Let me get this coat on you. Oh, there we go. Uh, coat made of all various colors. And Joseph was so very proud of this coat. Joseph would walk around and kind of strut in front of his brothers and his sisters saying, I am special. I'm the favorite. Now, what kind of a problem does that cause in the family? Yeah. First of all, everybody knows that Joseph's the favorite of the dad. And then Joseph walks around going, ha, ha, look at me. I'm, oh, yeah, she does a good job with that, doesn't she? I'm the favorite. Yeah. And not only that, Joseph had a couple of dreams. One dream is that there was this one a bundle of grain standing in the middle of the fields and 11 bundles of grain come and bow down to the one. And Joseph, I don't know why you did this, Joseph, but Joseph told her brothers this dream. Well, that just made it all the worse because obviously the ones standing tall is Joseph and the ones that are bowing down are the brothers. Hmm, what could that mean? And then she had another dream, or he rather, Joseph, had another dream, Josephina, whatever, had another dream, and it was that the sun and the moon and 11 11, count them, 11 stars bow down to Joseph. And Joseph told that dream as well. The moon, the, the sun and the moon being the mom and the dad and the 11 stars being the other 11 brothers. Wow. Well, the brothers didn't like that. So the brothers were kind of mean to Joseph and Joseph was kind of, was kind of proud and and conceited towards her brothers. One day she was told by her father to go to the fields and to find out some information on the brothers and come back and tattle on them. Oh, well, they didn't like that idea. So they saw Joseph coming and they took Joseph and they kind of were mean to Joseph and they beat Joseph and they took this coat that was Joseph's and they just tore it to shreds and they took Joseph and they threw her in a cistern, an underground water cont uh, storage area that was empty. And they put her in there. Thank you so much. You can go sit down. And Joseph was in this storage in this cistern and the brothers are going, what are we going to do with this Joseph? We need, to, we need to get rid of him. And they were talking about killing him. And one of the brothers said, no, we can't do that. He's the favorite. Well, sure we can. Well, and they talk about it. About that time, these traitors are coming through on their way to Egypt. And so, um, if I'm not careful, I'll go 20 minutes per point. That won't be a, or that'll be a long sermon, won't it? Yeah, sorry about that. So they sell Joseph to these traitors. He's out of their hair, and he's gone. They take the coat. They tear it up. They put uh, animal blood, some of the sheep's blood, goat's blood on it, and tell the father that a wild animal attacked Joseph, and he's gone. Wow. God loves us no matter what. You know, God loved Joseph, even though Joseph may have been a little prideful and conceited at the time, you know, as a young teenager. I'm the favorite. Look at me. God also loved the brothers, even though they were mean, and even though they did wrong, even though their hearts were, were set on evil. God loves us no matter what. And the Bible point is this, no matter what, <laughs> no matter, yeah, if you say awesome God afterwards, that's what all the kids are supposed to do. In the Bible, every time that someone says, God loves you no matter what. Awesome God. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Awesome. I get it. Uh, so, um, anyway, there's nothing that you have done, nothing that you 
have thought, no attitude that you have had that God does not love you anyway. That's the point. And the Bible verse is, your unfailing love will last forever. Psalm 89, 2. Psalm 89, 2. Your unfailing love will last forever. Well, Joseph's on his way to, uh, to Egypt, right? And as soon as he gets into Egypt, he is sold to Potiphar. Uh, Potiphar, you want to come up here, Rowan? Rowan played Potiphar. Yeah, Rowan played Potiphar for us. And so Potiphar was the one who owned Joseph and put Joseph to work in the house. And he quickly made Joseph in charge of all of the other servants in the house because Joseph was really good at what he did, right? So Potiphar uh, put them all to work. And what we did in class is we had them all uh, start uh, doing things in and around um, the house, cleaning house, and they were putting out animal food, and they were cleaning the floor, and this and that, and so, and Potiphar just sitting there, you may have saw a picture of him on Facebook, he's telling them all what to do, he did a great job in his group, and so that's what Potiphar was doing, but then one day, Potiphar's wife said that Joseph did something he didn't do, and that got, word got, and she told Potiphar that Joseph did something wrong, and but he didn't do it. And Potiphar said, well, there's only one thing to do. You go to jail. So he sends Joseph to jail. Okay, thank you. You can go sit down. So Joseph is in jail. And the Bible point is God is with you everywhere. No, no matter where you are, no matter what happens to you, whether you're in uh, a big family where there's... Uh, Troubles, contention, and uh, fighting, no matter if you're in a hole in the ground in a cistern, no matter if you're traveling on a camel on the way to Egypt, no matter if you are a slave, a servant in a household, no matter if you are in jail. Now, I don't know that many of you have been in any of those places, but there are places similar to those in your own lives that you have been no matter where you are, God is with you everywhere. Joshua 1.9 says, God is with you wherever you go. What I'm doing is I'm reading the Bible verses that are on the bottom of the Bible buddies. In fact, Vincent, these are your Bible buddies. Your bag was left here, and I didn't know where to find these, so I went to your bag and I pulled out your five Bible buddies, and so these are yours. Make sure you get them at the end. God is with you everywhere. Well, what happened next? Oh, Joseph, Joseph is in jail. And in jail with him are two of Pharaoh's um, main men in his court. One is his cupbearer, a cupbearer, you know what a cupbearer does, the one that pours the drink for the Pharaoh and actually tastes it. Oh, good little prop there. Tastes it to make sure that it's not poison and then gives it to the Pharaoh. Okay, and the other is the baker, and the baker is the one, obviously, that breaks, bakes the bread or bakes the donuts or the cinnamon rolls or cakes or whatever else that Pharaoh once baked, right? Well, somehow, someway, each of them end up on the wrong side of Pharaoh, and he puts them both in jail. And so they're in jail, and Joseph is there, and Joseph is put in charge. He's such a good worker, he's put in charge of all the prisoners, you kind of getting a, th a thing going on here? He's the favorite of the father. He's in Potiphar's house. He does such a good job. He's put in charge of the servants. He goes to jail. He's such a good prisoner, model prisoner, that he becomes in charge of all that's there. He sees... How many? Three? <laughs> Three clusters of grapes. Okay? Three clusters of grapes. And he says that he takes one of the clusters of grapes and he squeezes grape juice out of that cluster of grapes and he gives it to Pharaoh. And he has no idea what in the world is this, this dream for you saying that in three days, 
three clusters of grapes. Ned had a dream. The baker dreamed that he had one, two, three pans of pastries on his head. A pan of, what, bread? A pan of donuts? A pan of cinnamon rolls or chocolate cake or whatever, right? And Bert, you know, it's a dream. I know it's weird, but dreams are sometimes a little on the strange side, right? And birds come and birds eat the pastries from the top pan. And he says, what in the world does this dream mean? And Joseph says, come on up here. You got to come up here and say it into the microphone. What does it mean? The three clusters mean in three days. Yes. You'll, uh, the bakery will die. Oh, okay. Thank you. In three days, the baker is going to die. The birds eating from the pan, that's what it means. So in three days' time, sure enough, the cupbearer is given his job back, and sure enough, to the baker. Wow. God has allowed him to have, uh, to interpret these dreams correctly. Now, Joseph said, hey, cupbearer, remember me when you go before Pharaoh. When you get your job back, remember me. He says, ah, okay, no problem. God is in charge. See, Fa thank you. Pharaoh thought he was in charge. But God is in charge. In fact, Pharaoh, the scripture says that Pharaoh two years later after the cupbearer gets his job back, Two years later, Pharaoh has a couple of dreams. Pharaoh dreams that there are five fat cows eating grass up on the bank and that there are five skinny, scrawny, unhealthy cows that come up from the river bank and they eat the fat cows. S seven of them. Seven cows, seven cows. The scrawny ones eat the fat ones. What in the world does that mean? And then Pharaoh has a dream that there are these seven luscious ears of corn. Great looking ears of corn. Man, I'm, they're just the best of the crop. And then there's these dry, withered, yucky looking ears of corn. There's seven of them. And the seven yucky dried up withered ears of corn, eat the seven good ears of corn. Now Pharaoh goes, what in the world does this mean? And he is perplexed. And about that time, the cupbearer says, wait, I know, I know. Samantha, you want to tell us? You want to tell us? No. Rowan, you want to tell us? What does it mean? It means that they're going to have food for seven years. In the next seven years, they're not going to have any food. All right. Awesome. That's exactly what happened. Joseph is called in to see the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh thinks he's in charge. Pharaoh's not in charge. God is in charge. And so Pharaoh has this dream interpreted by Joseph, who obviously has this gift from God to interpret the dreams. And God is the one that is totally, ultimately in charge. And so Joseph even suggests that we save grain, food, for the seven years that we have it, so that during the seven years that we don't have it, we'll have food. Store, make a storage, make a food bank so that we can use it and sell it to those that will need it for seven years. So that's exactly what they did. All the while, they're recognizing that God is in charge. Awesome. Psalm 147, 
5. How great is our God. His power is absolute. Thank you. Awesome God. Now, that's the story of Joseph so far. He now has been brought out of prison. He has now come before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh puts him in charge, second in command of all of Egypt, to be the one to administer the gathering of food for seven years, and then to be ready to distribute it and to sell it for seven years afterwards. All the time, God is the one who is showing that he is in charge. You get the drift. Joseph was in charge, really, because he was the favorite son. Joseph was in charge in Potiphar's house. Joseph was in charge in prison. Now Joseph is in charge of all of Egypt. Why? Because Joseph knew that only God is ultimately in charge. He was a God-honorer, lover, follower. He followed God, therefore God allowed him to be in charge because he understood God was in charge. On the fourth night, we step away from the story of Joseph and we go to the story of Jesus. But you have to understand that the story of Joseph is very similar to the story of Jesus. Have you ever thought about that? Joseph was the favorite son. Jesus was the beloved one and only son. Joseph was treated badly by his family. Jesus was treated badly by his family. Joseph was ultimately accused of doing something he didn't do. Jesus died on the cross for a crime that he did not commit. Jesus, well, back to Joseph on Joseph's side. Joseph interpreted dreams that in three days you'll have your job back or that you'll be killed. Jesus was in the grave for three days. Hold that thought. Jesus is stronger than anything. God is stronger than anything. And the lesson teaches that God, that God is stronger than our sin. God is stronger than death. God is stronger than anything. You have awesome God. You have problems in your life. You have circumstances you wish could change. You have uh, relationships that are strained. You have maybe even things that are, are just going terribly wrong in your life. You know, God is stronger than any of that. God has a plan for your life. And God has the power. He has the greatness. He has what it takes to put your life back together because all the kings of men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But God can. God can. The final night, the Bible point is God is surprising. Come and see what our God has done. Psalm 66, 5. Come and see what our God has done. How many of Jesus' disciples, when they first were beginning to find out about Jesus, said to others, come and see who we have found. Come and see. Well, the story goes back to Joseph. Where did we leave Joseph? Oh, we left Joseph in charge of all of Egypt. Now he is to the point they've had the seven years of of good. They've stored up the grain and the food, and they have this huge storage of food in this food bank. And uh, now they're into the first couple of years of the time of famine. The time of drought. Have you been watching the news lately? Things are drying up over not only over our area, but over several parts of the United States. Um, Many lakes across our uh, 
uh, Midwest and the West are at their lowest point in recorded history. The Great Salt Lake is losing water. And on and on it goes. Conditions like that for seven years in Egypt. Not only in Egypt, but in the entire region. Also in the land of Canaan, where Joseph was from. And so Joseph's family, his father and his brothers, are now having issues with food themselves because of the hard times and no food growing. And they learn that there is food available in Egypt. So Joseph sends ten of the brothers. He keeps Benjamin home, the youngest, because he's already lost his next to youngest, his favorite, and now Benjamin has kind of become his favorite. And so he keeps him at home and says, I hope not, I don't want anything to happen to him. So he sends 10 of the brothers to Egypt to buy food. And who do they come in front of? Their brother Joseph. Joseph recognizes them. They don't recognize Joseph. Joseph speaks Egyptian to them the entire time through translators, and he understands, obviously, the Hebrew that they are speaking, but he doesn't get let on that he knows who they are. And he accuses them of being spies, to having come and said, oh, you think that the famine has made us vulnerable? You're coming to see if maybe the Egyptian nation is becoming vulnerable because of the famine, you spies? And they're going, no, no, we're honest men that just need food. And he says, well, I'm going to keep you all in prison. Uh, and he, he finds out that there is a, a, he asks them specifically questions about the family, and they're kind of going, yeah, our father's still alive. Yeah, there's... We're 12 brothers. Uh, the youngest stayed home, and the next to the youngest is no more. It's the way it's written in the Bible. <laughs> he is no more. They don't know what's happened to him. They don't know if he's dead. They don't know if he's in Egypt or someplace. They don't know if he's in China someplace. They, they don't know where he is. It's been 21 years since they have seen their brother. Long story short, he says, okay, uh, after three, year, three days of kind of playing with them, messing with them, and thinking that they're, they're all in trouble because they're spies, he ends up not keeping all of them and sending one back. He ends up keeping one in prison, sending all the rest of them back, and asking that they make sure they bring the youngest brother, Benjamin, back so that the oldest one can be released from jail. Follow that? It's a lot, I know. I mean, we're talking several chapters in Genesis. You've got to read it. So that's what they do. But on their way, the first, uh, when they make their first campsite that first night, one of them goes to the bag of grain to get some out for the donkeys. And as he looks into their bag of grain, he sees the money that they had brought to buy the grain with. And they look in all the bags of grain and all the money is there. And they go, oh my goodness, we are all dead men. But they go on home because they've got grain to get back to the family. And they tell their father all about it and tell how they've got to take Benjamin in order to get the oldest out. And now they're going to say that we, are, we're, uh, we're, that we steal, that we stole money from them. What are we going to do? So after their grain runs out the next time, yes, they... Finally, take Benjamin with them. They take the money that they had returned in their grain, their bags of food, and they take more to buy more. So they've got all this, and they go back and they say, okay, um, sorry about that. There must have been a mistake. We didn't do this. Somebody, some, and the house manager said, oh, it was God. Your God did that. I go, okay. Long story short, this time, after Joseph sees them, sees the brother, the youngest brother, Benjamin, uh, he loves his brother, but he still hasn't revealed himself to them. They send him off again, headed home, puts the money is back in the bags. You know, he instructs his people to put their money back in their bags. And this time, he not only puts money in their bags, but he puts the favorite. Hey, water is a favorite when it's 100 degrees outside puts a favorite silver cup of Joseph's in Benjamin's bag. 
And after they had they opened them up that first night, they find their money in Benjamin. Well, they don't find this. Uh, what happens is that this time Joseph sends army after them to catch them. And when they catch them, says, someone has stolen a silver cup from our master's house. And they go, no, none of us. And they start searching through the bags, and they think they're all innocent. But guess what? Benjamin has the silver cup. And say so they all go back to Egypt. They're all accused of doing something they didn't do. Joseph was accused of doing something he didn't do. Jesus was accused of doing something he didn't do. He had no sin. We have sin. He took our place when he died on the cross. God is surprising. God can do more than you can ever imagine in your life. So long and the short is once they get back, he reveals himself to them. Oh, back to the two dreams that we started with. Almost forgot. When they came in into his presence to buy food the first time, guess what they did? They bowed to their brother Joseph. And so the dreams that Joseph had as a teenager now have come true. His older brother, his, his, yes, his older brothers all now have bowed to him. God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing in your life. God knows what he wants to do in your life. Are you ready to let him? You see, God loves us no matter what. God is with you everywhere. God is in charge, which is another way of saying Jesus is Lord, whether we want to recognize it or not. God is stronger than anything, and God is surprising. He has more planned for you than you can ever imagine. Are you willing to let him be in charge of your life? Well, the story ends... Uh, it's, it's a fairy tale ending. Uh, Joseph finally reveals himself to his brothers. They all, after getting over the fact that the brothers think that he's going to have them killed because he was sold off to slavery, he forgives them for the wrong that they did. Oh, did Jesus do something like that? Forgives us for the wrong that we do? See, I think the story of Joseph was no mistake. I think it's in the Bible to teach us and to teach those who came after Joseph for 2,000 years that Jesus was on the way. He is a type of Jesus, a type of Messiah at his point in history, and he points to Jesus, the Messiah. And now we have his story and Jesus' story. After the forgiveness is given to the brothers, Joseph says, is my father still alive? And they say, yes, he is. And so they go home. They get the father. They get all of the families. They all gather together. And as they come, and, and, and Joseph buys land for them in Egypt, and they all come and they live. Seventy, seventy family members, not counting the women and children, because... Sorry, in their culture, they didn't count. Seventy of them. That's, that's an important number in the Bible, seventy. Seventy of the, the family plus others all come and begin to live in Egypt with Joseph. And the whole end of the story is uh, Genesis 50, 20. Genesis 50, 20, where Joseph says to the brothers, what you did to me... You meant for evil. But God used what you did to me for good so that I might save many people. What we did to Jesus, we meant for evil. And you realize, and I left this part out and I'll back up to it. You realize that when Jesus died on the cross, every nail that he took was a nail 
for you. He died for you. Your nails put him on the cross. Your sins put him on the cross. Jesus died for you. Did I finish Joseph's story? And they all come to, to Egypt. And the Hebrews that were in Egypt, they began to prosper and to multiply. And, we, and it goes on up to the time of Moses then until uh, we know how that story begins. But God brought it all together because he's in charge. And what the brothers meant for evil, what we do as evil, God uses it for the good. Evil men put Christ on the cross, but God used it to bring salvation to us all. Forgiveness. He forgave his brothers, Joseph did. God forgives us. Jesus forgives us. Our God is great. Our God is greater. He is awesome. He is a great, great God. Don't forget that. He has a plan for your life. But it starts with Jesus being the center of your life. It starts with you asking God to forgive you for your sins. That Jesus might live in your life. And then he will begin to bless you. And as long as you know that God is in charge, he will. He will bless you and he will honor you and grant you many, many responsibilities in his kingdom. Let's stand together. Father God, we just thank you so very much for loving us and for caring for us and for being such a great God. We love you, we honor you, and we just pray that you would just be with us as we uh, continue to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.
how great you are, how much you are in control, how much you are in charge. For we pray in Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. God bless you.